You know what? Tom needs no introduction. Tom Jackson, ladies and gentlemen. Are we up? Are we up? Good. Good. How y'all doing? Yeah. Tired? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, all right. Um, okay, so who has seen me teach ever? Who hasn't? All right. Uh, so my job, I'm a live music producer, we, whatever that means. Everyone goes, yeah, yeah, I got it. It's like, so what does that mean? Because a lot of people would say, oh, you're a choreographer. That's a, that's a cuss word to me, by the way. Because uh, really, it's about the music. It's about the music. But, as you'll see today, we also have to do something physically on stage unless we want to start doing one of those things on stage where... 3D people show up and you don't have to. Hologram, thank you. This coffee's got to get kick in here. I need to connect the dots. I told somebody that I was talking about GPS, I said, you know that thing in the sky that tells us where to go? <laughs> it's sad, it's sad. Um, you can kill the monitors but if there's any monitors because I don't, I talk loud. Um, anyways, I'm a live music producer. I work with artists on their live show. That's all I do. Um, you know, there's so much stuff going around here from the internet to publishing to this, to this, to this, to this, and I know very little about any of it. I really do. And it, that's partly intentional. It's partly because I'm so busy. Um, and it's, it's partly because I get really pissed off at people that overstep their boundaries. When I have a studio producer trying to produce a live show, it's like, yeah, really, dude? You know, you don't guys remember what a wiffle ball bat is? I want to have one in a holster. And when someone does that, like an A&R guy goes, oh, yeah, man, I, I put your show together. I want to go, whack! So, um, but I help artists with their live show. And um, this is singer, they, they asked me this year, uh, who saw me do the live band makeovers before? Tomorrow night, tomorrow night, 4.30, I'm putting um, Trent Harmon, who I guess won American Idol last year, and his band up here on stage. And I'm gonna just, I'm gonna um, <laughs> fix him. <laughs> no, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna have a good time, and I'm gonna show you, how many of you play both? Acoustically, and then sometimes with a live band, or would like to. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll be helpful for you tomorrow night, too. Tomorrow night, 4.30. Shows you how old I am. Um, <laughs> hey, you got to get in bed by 7.30. <laughs> um, so here's the deal. So how many of you are singer-songwriters? All right, pretty much everybody. And, and you want or are do, going out doing shows or wanting to do shows? So let's, let's face it, as a singer-songwriter, um, it's, 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 I don't know, last singer-songwriter show that you went to that was an hour long? Because if you want to make a living, how many of you want to make a living doing this, by the way? Yeah, if you want to make a living, you can't just play one song at a writer's round. You can't. I mean, you could. Like the old jazz saying, how do you make a million dollars in jazz? Start with two million. Uh, <laughs> same thing if you're only playing one song in a writer's round hoping for the, somebody to discover you. So here's how, my deal is if you're going to do 45 minutes to an hour and a half, which you're going to have to if you're going to make a living, it's got to be more interesting than just song talk, song talk. Song, talk, song, talk. And I, I realize that I'm sure your show's different than anyone else's you've seen. But um, it can get pretty boring, can't it? I mean, it really can because, because uh, even if they're really, really good songs. So, and we also then, some of you probably have or want or will do opening act stuff where you're 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Um, and that's it's a little easier to make interesting because it's, it's you know it's it's shorter. It's kind of like 
The Writer's Round, or your showcase, is a, I, I say this all the time, um, is like a, or your single, if you put out singles, is a commercial. Commercial. Your album or your 20 minute set is like a TV show. 22 minutes, eight minutes of commercials. Uh, there you go. And then you're, if you're gonna make a living doing this for an hour, hour and a half, it's like making a movie. And understand this, the, they cannot all be the same. The way you approach those are all different. If I'm doing a showcase, one song, I go for the juggler. You don't wait for the third song because there isn't a third song. So, uh, but it, what I'm gonna talk about mostly today is just some ideas on how to make your show more interesting when you're by yourself, or any duets, out, duos, duets, whatever they're called, people, all right. Um, well, you actually have an advantage uh, in some ways, because there's two of you. When I go out to work with a singer-songwriter, and in the last month, I've worked with a singer-songwriter, I worked with an indie band, seven, six-piece, worked with a group that does arenas, and then I do, um, I did a duo just yesterday, yesterday? What's today? It was Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And, but here's the thing I want you guys to understand, conceptually, and this is one of the hardest things for some people who think, lin I can't say this word, lin linearly, pretty good, say that quick. Linear, whatever it is, you have, if you think that way, and you got to be told exactly what to do, um, I'm working on uh, a new product for singer-songwriters specifically. Uh, yeah, linear thinker. Uh, it's okay, we need you in the world too. Um, you keep the world in line. The rest of us are like, whoa, dude. <laughs> so... But all four acts, and they were all different, every one of them completely different, I use exactly the same concepts. So if you can think conceptually, some of you have already come up, you've, you've got some of my products, my books, that kind of stuff, and you've applied it to you, where you're at doing your thing, and if you can think that way, it'll be unbelievably helpful. Um, I want you to know this. The reason I do this, I, I mean, I make a living, I've been doing this 25 years, um, I started when I was three, uh, <laughs> and by the grace of God, and I mean that, I've done it with some of the biggest names in the music industry to people starting out. It does not matter to me. What matters to me is I can help you do what you love to do. In fact, I prefer working with indies and stuff because nothing against a Taylor Swift or a Shawn Mendes. There's a lot of drama. Surprise, surprise. Um, but, I mean, and great people, but just, just go do the creative thing. That's what, we, that's what I was made to do, and I want to help you guys. I've had some of you guys come up to, really, I've had quite a few, five, six, seven of you just today come up and say, you changed my show completely. I'm now doing live. Uh, I mean, I've been doing, I can't help but notice you because you've got the red hair. How long have you guys been doing the thing live now? Seven years. Why? Good, good. Yeah. This stuff works, doesn't it? And, and that's the reason I do it. There's nothing better than someone coming up to me, grabbing me and saying, dude, you changed everything. I'm selling more product. I'm, I'm now get booking more dates. That's the payoff for me. And yes, I make money selling books and, and myself and, Amy, are you here? Where's Amy? I'm, my associate producer is, there she is. This is Amy. Some of you have even worked with Amy. Um, she works with artists on their show. Uh, same as I do. She's just cheaper. Uh, she's very good, too. She's not cheap. Oh, I, I'm going the wrong way here. <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's expensive. <laughs> uh, whatever. Um, 
But the idea is so that you guys can do what you love to do. That's what I was, that's what I'm here for. And, and I want to tell you this, some of you don't know me also, this stuff works. There's no, this stuff works. I don't know how, I'm not trying to be arrogant, I'm not trying to be egotistical. This stuff works. I've done it for 25 years. I tell people all the time, probably the best thing I've got going for me is perspective. When you are inside your own body and you only do your thing, which is exactly what most people do, you, you feel like you're the only one that feels that way or goes through these struggles or has this or is that. But I've literally worked with two, three hundred artists. And after a while, there's nothing new under the sun. Does that make sense? If you have your day job, there's not like all of a sudden aliens land and, and I got to put that in the show. Uh, that'd be cool. Uh, do that with Spongle or something, if anyone knows who they are. Does anyone know Spongle? Oh! Favorite band. All right. So, um, but this stuff works. So, let's talk about it. My, I have a method. And now, when, as soon as I say that to artists, at first they go, oh, can't do a method because I can't be put in a box. I've got to be spontaneous. Oh, shut up. Spontaneity and winging it are two different things. And most of us just wing it. Spontaneity comes out of form. Unless, even fish. I don't know who fish is. Uh, uh, even they have form before they go whack. But this method, uh, I couldn't have done it at the very beginning because I... I over the years, I put it together, but here's how it goes. It starts like, and I use the analogy of like building a house. You guys are a house. Your show, your career is, you want to build this thing and make it work. So how do you do that? It starts with, what does it start with? If you have my book, please say something different. A plan, yes. Vision. There's a saying, without vision, people perish. I'm going to paraphrase that. Without vision, your show's going to be mediocre. You don't wait for the contractor to drive up and turn to your wife or husband or, or, or whoever you're living with and say, where do you want to put the house? We want to be spontaneous. <laughs> How many bedrooms? Think you want it. No. you got to get a vision for it. There's got to be a plan. There's a method to the madness of the psychology of bringing something to an audience. Don't you think there is in restaurants? Don't you think there is in grocery stores? Why do you think the milk is way at the back? Everybody needs it, so you're walking by things, so you go, oh, 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 oh. And by the time you get, it's Costco. Anyone here go to Costco? You go in to get a couple things, you come out with what? Crap, i got to take a mortgage out to go to Costco. There's a psychology to a show. The audience you play to has expectations. I'm going to tell you right now in one sentence how to make a career or living exceed your audience's expectations. That's it. Ta-da. See you guys later. Buy my book. No. The key here now is, how do you exceed your audience's expectations? Doesn't it make sense? When you walk into a restaurant, and if the food, you have expectations. You have expectations when you walk in. Does somebody greet you? Is there a sign? You have expectations when they, you sit down. How long um, it takes for them to come and ask you what? Would you like something to drink? Yeah. It's not rocket science, but there's a psychology to this whole thing. This portion, when you order a burger, you, there are certain portions. You order a salad, you ex, there's expectations. And if that um, restaurant does not meet those expectations, you will not go back unless, I mean, unless it's just a quick thing or something. But are you going to tell everybody about it? People come up to me here and say, tell them where should I eat? And I go, listen, I know a really mediocre restaurant around the corner. I don't care, singer-songwriters, if you're a hole-in-the-wall Mexican restaurant. Some of those are the best, aren't they? 
Yeah, you don't have to be this big, lavish, lights and everything. But darn it, whatever you are, be really, really good. Exceed their expectations. So you need to have to understand the psychology of an audience. How to put a set list together. Here's how most people put a set list together. They come out, put their guitar on, we'll be back in 20, they go in the back and go, song, T, talk, I gotta change guitar, you gotta change guitar? Okay, we'll talk there. Uh, that's how you do it, no. You gotta get a vision. When you, songwriters, when you write those songs, Don't you, don't you feel, particularly on some songs, some songs, let's face it, some songs you slave over, uh, 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 you're trying to get, maybe play it on radio, um, they turn out amazing. Some songs just come naturally, and when you're, you're writing those songs, you kind of, if you really close your eyes, you get a vision for how the, you want the audience to feel. Am I right? It's like, oh my gosh, this is touching. This, I mean, it, you're, it's moving you, or you're having fun playing it. And so you, when you're writing it, that's part of the vision, folks. That's part of the vision isn't something you go, okay, I'm going to sit down and have a vision. No, it comes in multiple ways. It comes as you're driving. It comes as you're, I don't know why, I don't know if any of you guys will like this. It comes when I'm shaving. I don't know why, but I, maybe there's a disconnect. But I get ideas. And those ideas are what make you unique. But here's the problem with vision sometimes. So we get those ideas. We get those ideas. And we, and we start getting a little excited about like, wow, that's a great idea. And then, for a, then it stops and, and immediately. It doesn't work. And fear comes in. But those, I, I, I can't tell you how many times... I've told artists, just follow your instinct on these. And here's the beautiful part. We're talking about rehearsal. We're talking about recording. We're talking about that. Follow those bunny trails. Make them develop that vision so that, and ultimately, when you play in front of people, that connection happens, that emotional connection. And you create a moment between you and your audience. That's what audiences go for. They go to experience moments. They don't come to hear songs, songwriters. I know it's blasphemy. But it, it's what's inside the song, how it makes them feel. Isn't that the way you are? So how do we get that feeling transferred over to them? That's the deal. That's the technique, that's the method. I don't come up with the feeling, but I sit there and go, oh my gosh. I remember listening, I remember the first time I worked with Taylor, and I, I didn't even, I mean, I heard her name, but I got the call, sent me the stuff, I put on the headphones and I heard the song 15. Any of you guys ever heard that song? I mean, I, by the end of that song, I was a 15 year old girl walking into the high school. <laughs> I mean, it was so well done, but then, we got to capture that live. And they're two different animals. Second part of this method, besides the vision and the planning, is what I call the foundation. You guys said it, the foundation. The foundation are the things we go through mentally, emotionally, psychologically, even spiritually, before and while we're on the stage. And what are, is our audience experiencing? Have you ever been to a, a, a show you're waiting to play, or you've been to a show and you've seen somebody on stage that is so nervous, you start praying for them. <laughs> oh, God, help that person. <laughs> and they're up there, and here's what they're thinking. That singer-songwriter is going, I hope they hear the words. I hope they hear the, my voice. And we're preoccupied with their behavior. So I'm going to talk a lot more about this stuff tomorrow. I'm not trying to skip, skip it. Uh, but I got two hours tomorrow. I got an hour today. So we'll deal with more of the psychology of an audience and, and what's going on in your head and heart when you walk out on stage. Just know this, that when you walk out on stage, you need to walk out confident and with authority.
And then ultimately, you develop charisma, and that, I'll talk about that stuff tomorrow. Um, third thing, after the foundation is lo- laid, we have materials, tools, and skill. We got to put up the house. What m- materials are we going to use? What tools are we going to use? Do we have the skill to do it? Same thing with you guys. The materials. Would you build a house with a hammer? The whole house. No, it's impossible. There are tools that you guys use, should use, that you don't. There are things to keep an audience engaged. And I'm not talking about choreography or being groovy. I'm talking about, I'm talking about stuff that will enhance that what you're trying to do so that the audience gets it. Because see, what we're talking about is communication. And communication is 15%. It's always freak songwriters out. 15% content. Your words. What? 30%. Your tone or emotion, how you bring something. 55% is what your audience sees with their eyes. So if they see the same thing over and over and over again after three songs, they're going to start checking out. Your songs, unless you're married to your audience. Don Mendes is married to his audience. He doesn't know who he is. Biggest young artist. Let's just take somebody like Beyonce or Taylor or somebody. They're married to their audience. Madonna, married to their audience. She comes out. Start singing, everybody jumps to their feet and starts singing along. You come out and start singing, they do this. <laughs> you are dating your audience. It's a different relationship. So, I'm going to say this again tomorrow, though, but I'll say it again today. So, do all your songs sound the same? The answer is, in an hour show, No. And the question is, why do they all look the same? Because they do. And to an audience that doesn't know you, after three songs, you start sounding the same because they look the same. They don't know your music. And I'm not talking about doing a dog and pony show. I'm talking about, it's like the difference between a band would be more like an action movie and yours would be more like a dialogue movie, where a glance means something. But, but uh, it, it's subtle stuff, but it makes a huge difference. So materials, tools, and skills, the third part of my method, understanding and practicing them and working on them. And the last part, after the house is built, what do we do? We move in. We move in. So. What do we move in? We move in who we are, our personality. So how do we do that? We take our songs that we've written and we develop two things, themes and characters for our live show. We're writing for a movie now, folks. We're not writing for our record. We're not writing for our single on Spotify. We're writing for our movie. And the writing is different. You develop themes and you develop characters. I'm going to show you a little bit about that today. We, we, we bring, we, we pull out the things that are awesome in that song and, and bring them to the audience in a way that they go, oh my gosh, I get it. Because audiences, I'm going to talk about this tomorrow, audiences are ignorant. They do not understand musical things. No one is sitting out there except the other songwriters. And even those guys are ignorant. And even if they weren't, They're so broke, they couldn't buy your CD anyways. (laughs) But audiences are ignorant. They're not sitting there going, wow, is that a seventh on that turnaround? Is that, oh, oh, I love the the Mixolydian scale. They're going, they're kind of cute. Really deep. I I, I like her hair. So, so here's the question then, and this is what I want to try and get across. By the way, this is the first time I've ever taught this class. Um, What does the audience pay attention to? 
Here's the dilemma I run across all the time with singer-songwriters. We write, why do we write? Well, most so singer-songwriters are pretty good with words. They like words. We're trying to communicate a message. We're trying to change something. We're trying to at least make a connection with somebody when we say something. They go, I can relate to that. The words. And then our voice. That's it. So we think, if I play this correctly, and it's a good song, and I sing well, that's what I do. Well, can anyone tell me that it's really not working? I mean, really, I mean, it's okay. People like you, but are you knocking it out of the park? I just had two people come to me and just say, when we worked on these things, no BS, I'm not trying to sell you a damn thing. Our merch went up 1,000%. Taylor's went up 600%. I'm saying this on film. I'm not lying. 600% because we, we didn't just focus on words and voice. What do people pay attention to besides that when you go to a show? Personal appearance? Personality, am I right? Some people just like people because they're likable. I'm going to pull up a young girl here, Taylor Taylor, who if, if you, somebody in this room doesn't like her, I, I think you're, we need an exorcism. <laughs> She's so likable. You know, there's a, Erskine, where are you at? There's another guy there. He, it's like, he's so likable and stupid. I mean, in a good way. So when you see him, it, it, so you win. At least you start winning. You start winning that way. But if you rely completely on just your voice and the words, you're in trouble. Because let's face it, let's talk about words in a live concert. How many of you, on a song that you don't know, how many of you actually hear all the words? Yeah. And, and you're up there on stage trying to articulate because you've been told to. How do you articulate in a gymnasium? Oh, uh, uh, love, 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 love. I love those guys. Why? It isn't the words. Some of it is the music. Think about it. I'm going to bring up a guy, uh, an Aussie, a great musician. It, I guarantee you that the thing that he leads with, in my opinion, no question, oh, he's got a funky voice, like Joe Cocker meets, I don't know, Tweety. Uh, no. He's a great, great player. People pay attention to great music. And you understand great music is different than great songs. Those are two different things. How about rhythm? Who in the room doesn't like? There's, you need to have a place in your show that has these awesome rhythm things. You're thinking, no, but my words. There's not, uh, listen, you go to an old folks home and they're tapping their feet. Banging their head, too, but that's a whole nother animal. <laughs> but there's rhythm. Some people are captured by the rhythm, not the words and the voice. Some people are captured by good music, not the words, not the voice. Now, do I want, do I want you to have good words? Of course I do. Because there's a percentage of people that like words when they can hear them. But I can tell you this, and I always get grief for this, when I work with a band, in this day and age, this just blows my mind, but whatever. Go ahead and hit me afterwards. I'll give you my email. I have a t-shirt that I actually had to stop selling because some women were getting pretty upset about it, and it says, guys like guitar riffs, girls like relationships. Chick flick, guy flick, I know that that's not politically correct in this day and age. That's stupid. 
Guy, you go to a metal concert, who's there? All women, right? They just love it. No, it's all guys going, and then a couple girls dragged along looking really good. You go to a chick flick, you got to, oh, it's massively filled with a bunch of guys crying, going, that was the best movie. No way. So we got to understand our audience. What do people go for? And they go for different things. We go to a restaurant, and you'll notice people order, somebody will order fish. Somebody's a vegan. Somebody orders a burger. You're a restaurant. Are you, and and I'm, not, I'm not talking about you're a dog and pony show. Hey, I can do this now. I can do that. I can do this. It's de- taking who you are, your material, your music, and developing the themes and the characters inside your music so that the audience gets it. Am I making any sense? Say uh huh. I want you guys to make a living. I, I listen. I've been, I've been one of the most fortunate people that I know. I've got to do what I love to do for over 25 years, and I can't tell you how what a, what a privilege, what a what a blessing. I can't, and I want you guys to experience that. It is so awesome to know what you were created for and to do it and and make a living doing it. And affect people's lives. I'm getting mushy now. Okay. Melody. Obviously, melody is important. Not just the words. So here's what we're going to do. Um, why don't we start with you, uh, Taylor Taylor. I'm going to bring Taylor Taylor up here. Give her a hand as she comes up. Bring your guitar. Um, And we're very kind audience, aren't we? We're grateful it's her, not you. Yeah. Yeah. So I wish, I really do wish I had the time to have her play 30 minutes to get perspective. Does that make sense? So you can experience 30 minutes, because you're going to see one song and go, well, that's good. But, and I'm not saying you're like this, but, because I haven't seen an entire show, but just imagine 30 minutes of the same thing over and over in some ways. Can we help her? uh, Can we put her in the middle, or is this... Are these your pedals? Are these yours, uh, Mike? There we go. So why don't you play us a song? They love you already, don't you? <laughs> What's up, guys? And then, um, this, the, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you right, this is what I do in rehearsal. Just an old hippie who goes, hey, I got an idea. I've done this 25 years, so hopefully I can have a few ideas. But um, I've got an idea, and I've learned in those years to to listen to my instinct, Uh, particularly in rehearsal, because in rehearsal, if I try an idea and it doesn't work, don't do it. It's not rocket science. Uh, But if it works, we go, whoa, that works. And then we we develop it. So that's what we're going to do here. Taylor? Thank you for having me here. Uh, it's an honor to play in front of so many music creators, uh, so thank you. And this one is called Candy Store. And it's, it's not to be confused with the candy shop, because it's a candy store. Stop myself from smiling all the time. It's the thought of you that gets me through. Face to face, your hands on my waist. I don't want to say goodbye. It's crystal clear what I feel when you near me. Not like those other guys. You're everything in more that I've been looking for.
with you, I wanna spend all of my time. No, it don't matter where. If I'm with you, and I don't care. You and me is how it should be. We know love is not a game. Rain or shine, I'll be here by your side. And I know we'll do the same. You're She's impossible not to like, am I right? <laughs> am I right? Yeah. All right. Thank you. So this is really quick, so I'm just going to jam on this a little bit. Um, what is the chorus? Hang it. You're everything and more that I've been looking for, that I've been looking for. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how I can do the same thing on two completely completely different artists, but pull the same concept. Hit the first chord. I want you to take that out of time, and I want you to sing half the chorus, but resolve it. So, and look at that guy right there. You've had about 30 guys fall in love with you just sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> um, hit the, sing the chorus. But don't, but don't strum it. Tell this guy right here, he, he's, Everything you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> you're everything and more that I've been looking for. That I've been looking for. That I've been Resolve it. Looking, looking for. for, 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 for. Like a little kid. No, 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 no. The first one? Just do, uh, I don't know, I'm terrible at words. You are everything I'm, that I'm looking for, <laughs> that I'm looking for. Chord progression. Oh, the, the, the rhythm starts. Okay. Your start, this is, this is now your introduction. This is now your intro. You're everything and more that I've been looking for. That I've been looking for. You can play those, you can play, you can diamond. You know what a diamond is? Ladies, I'm not talking about yeah. this. In Nashville, it's where you go <laughs> bang. Uh, dang it. Play a diamond. Everything that I've been looking for. That I've been, been looking, looking for. for. That I've been I've looking been for. for. 
that make sense? Yeah. Now, it's a very cool melody, isn't it? You gotta get your, your the message, first of all, if the words can't be heard, at least we know one thing. What is it? <laughs> She's looking for sales. <laughs> For love. In the wrong place at CD Baby, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> so try it again. Take that out of time. And this is where spontaneity does come in. If, depending on where this goes in the show, if, this, if the audience is like totally with you, you milk this sucker. If they're like, I like that, you play it a little faster. Does that make sense to everybody? This is the, the ebb and the flow of a show. One more time. Now, you know what we're doing now? The intro to the whole song. Intro to the whole song. I got yeah. you. And tell that guy. <laughs> His heart's doing this right now. I'll sing to my mom. <laughs> You're everything in my that I've been looking for, that I've been looking for, that I've been looking for. That's one thing. Take a chorus. So you've got a couple choruses that you guys do. Take it out of time, milk it, put it at the front of the thing so people get it. And if it's done right, we almost, if I had time, we could get a chill out of that, couldn't we? Am I right? Did somebody kind of feel headed that way? Now here's the deal. This is, this is manipulation. I know it's not. Um, <laughs> You get a chill out of your audience, guess what they're going to want to do? Buy your CD, why? So they can relive that chill, even if it's not on the CD. <laughs> they'll go to that place. This is where they go up. I want to, they'll come up, don't be deceived. They'll come up and say, where's that song about looking for all stuff? But here's what they're saying. Where's that song that made me feel that way? Because I want to feel that way again. And if you have... Ten of those different feelings in a show, not different, different menu, stuff's going to fly off your table. I promise you it will. All right, so then, and is this really manipulation? This is exactly what an audience goes for. Hey, why? That's why you go to a movie. It's why, I mean, all right, so then the next thing, young lady, um, go ahead and start. I, I just got to do this rapid fire, but go ahead. Go right, no, go right from the ooh, 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 ooh. ooh, ooh, ooh. Hold on a second. This song, when I recorded it, it has a groove, so I need someone to help me out. Come on, put your hands together for me. Come on, teach them. Come on, that's you telling them. Start playing now. That's good. Stop. You notice I stopped even after we started the song? No, words, I got her going, and the idea, plan spontaneity. Uh, we started going, hold it a second. And no one in the audience is going, oh no, she stopped the song. <laughs> it's not like that on the record, I think, because I, though I've never heard her record. Uh, so we're, we're laying down a groove here. And guess who's getting involved? The audience, exactly. We need rhythm in the show. Um, right, because I, I don't have time. Go take me from the uh, second chorus into the bridge. You guys gonna do the rhythm thing? They get to do the rhythm thing. We just play the second <laughs> chorus. <laughs> You're everything in my that I've been looking for, that I've been looking for, that I've been looking for, like a little. Ain't no 
know this you guys stop clapping and that is the right response so if they stop clapping don't go oh my gosh they stopped clapping know that this is we're just going to get ice cream this is not sex okay <laughs> you know what I mean we're holding hands and they, they you know we let go of our, our hand just so we could take a lick or something I don't know um, <laughs> so on the bridge don't sing, there's nobody above you, there's nobody above you the first time. Just say, uh, what is it? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, no, no, I'm sorry. Don't say I love you. Just sing, boom, do, do, like you're thinking it. I'm going to hold on to you when you stop singing. Go. Right from the bridge. There ain't nobody above you. So here's what I want you guys to do. You've heard it many times. Go, I want you to go. What is the part? Reach it to him. Can you sing that with me? Good, keep it up. Come on, jam that up. So here's the question. Did I destroy the song? No. The song's already there. I took a, a, a couple of themes, the chorus, the felt, the, the ooh, 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 whatever part that is, and turned it into an audience participation. Audiences want to be a part of it. We're not putting a lot of pressure on people by going, you're not in their face, you're, you're singing a really cool little part, am I right? It's got a groove going on. I might have, I, I might have, Got them clapping and then singing. I don't know. But the point is, inside your songs are themes to be developed. Also, during the audience participation, the, see, the theme is the music that's going on, stuff going on inside, whether it's rhythmic, whether it's melodic, whether it's whatever is inside that song, we crack it open and develop it. We don't, we don't have a time limit in a live show in an hour and a half. The first thing you guys think of, if I said you have 25 minutes to play, the first thing 99.99% .99 of the people think is, how many songs can I cram into that 25 minutes? That's like going into a restaurant and saying, how much food can I eat in a half an hour? Seriously, it's exactly it. But really, what you want to do is sit down and everything you taste. Oh, that steak is good. Oh my gosh, the bread is awesome. Oh, this, rather than, <laughs> let's cram it. And the, the character part is you. How, you. how you get people involved, how you talk to your audience, your personality. People come to see people, not just hear music. And so we want the human connection and during the audience participation, you can play with them. You, you can play with them during this. You could stop, wait, wait, that's, you know, because anyone ever had asked anybody to clap along and they clap on the ones? It's like a, it's like a southern gospel thing, you know? <laughs> Comedy. So, so you literally just stop them and say, stop! Let's try this the right way. And no one's going to get mad at you. They're gonna, they're, you're going to be endearing. You're, you are impossible not to laugh. 
So, so bring that, give it up for her. Mike. Thank you. Mike, come on up. Where are you at? You guys come all the way from Australia for this, so, so try. So try and hang out with him. Somebody uh, whistling that melody? You're going to walk away. I'm telling you, product sales. Look, at you do this on every song. I don't mean every song is an audience participation. You, but you look inside your songs, and I wish I had time to crack them all open. Um, that's why you hire Amy. That's why you hire me. That's why I'm trying to develop a uh, product so you guys can, we can look at all these different options on video and stuff. Um, but I'm telling you, and after an hour, if we do different things, the audience will say that four-letter word, which is a beautiful word. Anyone know what it is? <laughs> and what grade did you graduate from? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Four-letter word called more. Awesome. I got to remember that. Do we have that on film? That'll go viral. I, this guy's awesome. Play. Hello, hello. He talks funny. G'day. <laughs> time I get back on my two feet Damn, Mr. Bad Luck has sent someone new for me to me It seems I've spent my life playing that illusion again Still number four down again It's all the same now just when I think there's nothing left to do I'm gonna turn around and I say to you Better days are coming my way Better days are they coming my way I'm gonna find myself a little piece of a mind Such a see exactly what I might find I'm not asking for much to let me bear me Could somebody shed a little light upon my scene for my sin. Just when I think there's nothing to live to a do. Well, I go 
Turn around and now Nashville, I'm gonna say to you. Better days are coming my way. Better days are coming my way. I'm gonna find myself a little piece of a mind. Well, I'm gonna search and see exactly what I might find. I'm not a Asking for much just to let me bear me. Could have somebody shed a little light upon my scene, upon my scene, upon my scene. Yeah. I am. One singer or songwriter to another, those words were touching. Uh, were we coming for the words for that one? No. No, no that's all. It, so it's a groove going on. Obviously, his playing. Normally, I'm going to kick him in the butt. He's always bigger than me. Normally, you play with what? A loop pedal. A loop pedal, yes. He, he norm, I saw him on uh, YouTube, and he hits the loop, and then he goes off on his guitar. And, it, and it's stupid good. Um, quickly, hit your, hit your first. Uh, hit your first chord, just like we did with um, Taylor Brown. I want to. Da, da, da. Uh, give me some words. Uh, what? Some of the words in there. Every time I get back no, on. No, no. Stay, stay, on, stay on the E. Every time I get back, and then go, <laughs> all right? Every time I get back. Every time I get back. No, on the, do, on the, on, on the one. <laughs> bum, bum, on that note, bum, bum. Just stop, then go, um, bum. I said, I said every time, every time, what? boom, every time, every time, two kicks, no, two kicks, boom, boom, <laughs> I said every time, then go walk up to the, is it a five, whatever, uh, what do they call it in Nashville, da, I said every time with your voice. Oh, go, do it. I said every time. No, then you go up to walk up to the. What, what chord are you on? The, the, yeah, does it? Four. Oh, he knows it. All right, so every time. I thought he was like the guy who thought four words were all, the notes were all were awesome. Yeah. So every time. Yeah. Every time I'm Face. What is the audience gonna do when he does that? <laughs> and then resolve it. Every time I get back. Every every land on the the one now. Then let it ride, ring, brown, ring. Then walk over here. Slowly go. <laughs> or go back to the stool. I'm just trying. <laughs> I've been told to cut the session. I'm trying to cram this in, Mike. So, or you could just stay on the one. We just, you guys understand what I just did? 
Boom. Every time, every time, every time I sing, every time, boom. Crowd goes, ah. Then you go, lay, lay, the, lay the low. Quiet. Give me a low groove. Just stay on the one note. So, tell me the story about this song. It's a song about um, being in a dark place and wanting to be in a better one. I had no idea what you just said, but say it again. <laughs> but isn't everybody leaning in? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not sitting there going, I didn't get the words, I don't like him. <laughs> then, then you stand up and you start playing your stupid guitar, which you're great at, with your loop, which you don't have. Um, and then you, you, you give me the solo out there, the intro, give me the solo, and then, then we're done, I'm sorry. So how do we, wait, wait, here's something you guys have got to solve. Pay attention to this one. He's over there, he's supposed to sing. What do we do? Oh my gosh. Do we do this? I'm rocking. Oh wait, I'm in trouble. <sighs> you stay on the one. Lay the groove down, and then that brings you over. Just like you would start your intro, you do your intro, come back to the one, come down to the, your first chord, and hang there. Most people go, I can't go out here because I got to get back to sing. Am I right? You need to come out, play it, <clears throat> own it, and then bring it down. I'm gonna go back and sing, because I'm in charge. I'm gonna sing what I want. <laughs> and then you start singing. Does that make sense to everybody? Yep. That's what we need to do. I'm sorry I couldn't put him, buy a couple of his CDs, him all the way from Australia, you guys. Um, <laughs> I, I, maybe I can get you up again tomorrow. I don't have any idea, all right? Listen, before I go, Mike, what's your name, Mike? Elrington. Yes. Whatever he just said. Mike, awesome Elrington. All right, listen, I've got a book. This book, this, I've sold thousands of copies. I've had... Literally hundreds of people tell me this is, this, their merch goes crazy. Look at this stuff as an investment, yes. folks. Yes. This is not reading a book, yes. uh, you know, buying a $9.95 book. This book is actually $99 because it's in colleges. Anyone ever go to college? It's expensive. Yeah. At the same time, I'm throwing in here at this event, I do it every year, three DVDs. Yes. All kinds of stuff on teaching. Um, it's called My Live Music Method and Seven Deadly Sin. There's about three hours of material on this and this book. It's 432 pages. Um, it's $99 here. Um, I promise you it's worth your investment if you play music. Um, then the last thing. Um, I have a DVD series that I know is very expensive. It's $300. It's $299. Seven, some of you have it. Who has it? Yes. I, I, sell, I sell them for $2.99. I just sold them today. But what I'm going to do here is this. I don't know about you guys, but we live in a ridiculously crazy world. Anyone say an amen to that? 13 people run over in Barcelona. What do we do about it? I have no freaking idea. It, it, after a while, we grow numb to it. 22 people at the Ariana Grande concert. Some Uber. What do we do about it? I don't know. Have a, another concert and, and, and try to figure it out. You've heard about them, right? Yeah. You hear about the 22,000 kids that died today? You didn't, did you? Yeah. And you know what? Here's the amazing thing. That happened yesterday, too. 
But here's the beautiful thing. You can do something about it. I work with charities that sponsor children. It changes their lives. If you sponsor a child, it's $33 a month. I will give you my $300 DVD series. Uh, there's, and it's something you can do something about, folks. It's not the stuff where you're like getting pissed off and getting on Facebook and all this stuff. This changes lives. I've been doing it 23 years. I've seen, I've seen over a million kids' lives changed by one at a time. Through, through artists, through people like me. $33 a month, I'll, if you sponsor this child, I'll give you my $300 DVD series and a download. Um, my wife is right out there at my table. You can buy the book and the DVDs, or you can sponsor a child, okay? God bless you, and tomorrow we're gonna have more fun. We'll have more time, too.